The moments in a soccer game that truly matter are when you have to take on another player. Whether it's to push it past them or turn on them, these 1v1 situations make or break games. Stay tuned to learn how to improve your 1v1 ability. Hey, this is Coach JR from Renegade Soccer Training. I often get questions, Coach, how can I take a defender on 1v1? How do I improve my 1v1 ability? Well, that's a pretty complicated question, but I think I have an answer for you. 1v1s come in many different forms. We always think about the guy that's going to take a guy on and go straight to goal, but most 1v1s are not actually that. A lot of 1v1s are, I'm gonna turn on a guy and I just have to distribute a ball. Or, I'm going for a ball and I'm going to get there just before another player and I have to shield him off the ball and play it back to one of my players. So 1v1s are all over the field and they come in many different forms. Now, if you're talking about taking a guy on and going to goal, we're going to talk about that in a totally different video. That is a learning scissors, the Matthews, and Elastico, and how to push a ball into space and beat a guy. What I want to talk about here is the progression of how do I actually get better at any one of those moves? So this isn't one of those fancy soccer move videos. What I want to talk about is the progression of how you go from whatever move you want to learn, learning that, gaining precision, adding timing, and now working at it at game speed. That is our progression. So we developed our Renegade Soccer Training Triangle. And at the base is rhythm and coordination. Because any move at any moment against any defender, it's learning to flow with the ball. And that's really where you want to be. So it's not some predetermined move against someone. So you want to start off with rhythm and coordination. And so no matter what move you're trying, you have to learn the basics. How does this feel? What is my spatial relationship with the ball? How do I move with the ball? How do I move off the ball? That is rhythm and coordination. This literally takes hundreds upon hundreds upon thousands of touches. And it's okay, because at the beginning, you're gonna be very uncoordinated and clunky on the ball. But as you get better at it, you get fluid. You'll add your own style. You'll start throwing in some shoulder movements, some head fakes and then you'll learn to master it. Now, after I push the ball and I've decided to beat somebody, whether I'm turning on them or pushing it past them, I have to make sure where I push the ball is absolutely precise. So that way it doesn't carve too close to the defender, but it also doesn't go too far away so I waste time. This is where our precision comes in. And so our next level is to give you targets and gates and you work on I'm gonna do that move just like I did with rhythm and coordination, but I'm gonna make sure the ball ends up exactly where I want it to end up. Now the third level is to add a passive defender. Because we can do all these fancy moves, but if I don't understand when to do them when the defender approaches me, this is a timing issue. So after precision, your next stage is timing. There's this weird relationship and everybody thinks it's space, but it's this timing relationship between you and the defender. So you have to set up a passive defender who you know isn't going to just blow you up with the ball, but is going to mirror you and it teaches you, hey, when do I pull off this move? It's a matter of space and timing and just a feeling inside you. You have to develop that. So that's our timing level. On top of that, let's say you want to work on your timing, but you don't have anyone else to train with. So you're training by yourself, but you still kind of work on timing. So what I would say is go and pick out a few of your favorite songs and listen for a certain bass hit. And every single time you hear that bass hit, perform the move. So that way something other than yourself is determining when you're gonna do that move. And make sure you're changing between different sorts of songs. And that way you create different rhythms that you're following. So you might say to yourself, how do I protect the ball when I'm by myself? Well, that's a good question. And when you start off with that rhythm and coordination, you're obviously just really focused on your feet because it might feel awkward. But then you have to start to imagine yourself, where will that defender be? And as you start pulling off your new move, you have to think about creating your shield. So I'm shielding the ball. And as you get into the precision, you have to carry that shield through into precision. Now this is naturally going to become apparent when you get into timing because you'll have another defender right there and they're not being hyper aggressive, but you can still see exactly when you're going to have to shield the ball during a move. So this helps you shield a ball even though you're training alone. 
The final level is game speed. And this does not mean you go out onto a full pitch and play a scrimmage game. That's not what it means at all. This means is that you are going to be at game speed with intensity and with incentive to win. So it could be having some running on the line or some burpee on the line or some sort of bragging rights. It kind of doesn't matter whether it's positive or negative reinforcement as long as you are trying your hardest. That's the final level because you can do everything you want against a passive defender, but all of a sudden when he can slide against you or he can put a body on you, that's very, very different. So the final level is game speed. So let's go back to the beginning, rhythm and coordination. We have set up an entire library called our Renegade Soccer Training Codex. And in this, we go into the lab with Coach Capo, and he breaks down over 30 different ways to maneuver the ball. It's called ball control, but you can use many of those different moves to beat a guy one-on-one. -on -one. Okay, if I have a girl out on the flank, I can beat her one-on-one. -on -one. However you need to train, that's the beginning. So if you're at home and you're alone, so you don't have that, that timing aspect or you don't have that game speed aspect, you can work on those first two levels. So you want to perfect the rhythm and coordination. Go through our codex, learn the move, and then just repeat it again and again. Do it for a minute, rest. Do it for another minute, rest. Continue on until it feels smooth, until you can lift your eyes up and you don't have to worry about where that ball is. Now, put down some gates. Work your way through those gates. And when I say gates, I mean cones. That's what we call gates. A couple of cones create a gate, okay? You can use socks. If you don't have cones, it doesn't matter. I didn't have cones when I was growing up. I just used socks, use pine cones. It makes no difference. But put down some targets. So if I turn and I push the ball into space, does it go through those targets? That develops your precision. And then when you get a friend, now you can add some timing. Have them mark you with some passive pressure. And then finally, try out your new move that you've just mastered in some kind of a scrimmage situation. And that way, when you're playing on Saturday, you feel confident in pulling it off in a game. I hope that walking through our Renegade Soccer Training progression, our pyramid of ball control, you can see how you can take any move and go from not knowing how to do it all the way up to pulling it off at game speed. This is Coach JR at Renegade Soccer Training. If you have any additional questions, please add them to the comments below. And remember, only renegades become legends.